So, see, what well, up, YouTube? You already know who it is. It is your boy, Randy D, and I'm back for more reactions to y'all. Just, just like some, some of y'all yesterday, I was shocked and was sad by the passing and the de death of Kobe Bryant and also his da daughter, Juliana, aka Gigi. To, to Bryant's family and also the other fa family members and fr friends of the other seven people who survived five to haven't survived that helicopter accident. I sent some of condolences to each and every one of you because me and some of me and my family we grew, we grew up, up on Kobe when my aunts met, met Kobe when my cousins went, went to one of Kobe's games but basically Kobe wouldn't want, want many of us to be sad or be in depression because of his death he would want us to try to move forward and try to be the inspirations that we could be be right now. So, if y'all want to try to do, do something to pay tribute to Kobe, how about y'all try to do a video of doing y'all best jump shots or slump slum dunks and just say, I hoop for Kobe or I hoop for GJ. Whichever may best suit you. It'd be, be a bit best way to pay, pay tribute to the Brian family. But anyway, let's get on, on to this reaction video because it is the first death battle of 2020. The, the 2020 death, death battle for this year. So it's time for this reaction because we are going to take a look at Miles Morales, aka the Black Black Spider-Man versus Static Shock. So, I can't wait to see how this turns out. And your boy gonna have to put, put his money on static because he got that lightning that I, I can't dislike. But anyway, let's get on to this video. The video is by Death Battle. The link to the video will be in the description down below. So, let's get into it. Earths of Marvel and DC Comics, there are hundreds what in of the thousands of superheroes happened to Wizard Bumstead. But what if I told you there were even more across the multiverse? Oh, great, as if we don't have enough to keep track of already. Miles Morales, the Spider Man of Marvel's Earth number 1610. And Static, the electric genius from DC's Dakotaverse. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. What happened to them? At first glance, the world of Earth-1610 isn't so different from our own. But look closer and you'll find Coca Soda instead of Coca-Cola, PDNY officers instead of NYPD. And a hamburger and fries can cost 30000 goddamn dollars! But perhaps the greatest difference in this so-called ultimate universe was that Peter Parker, the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, was dead. Enter Miles Morales. He was your typical kid from Brooklyn and didn't have much to worry about except his overbearing mom and dad. Hey kid, appreciate your folks while you have them. You never know when they're gonna pull a surprise Uncle Ben. Well, Miles spent most of his time with his more laid-back Uncle Aaron, who turned out to be a secret super criminal. Totally relatable. Anyway, during one of his heists into a secret lab, Aaron accidentally scooped up a spider. The next time Miles visited, the spider got loose and, uh, you know what happens. Miles, let's go. Cool. This spider carried the genetic enhancing Oz formula. Yet another attempt to recreate Captain America's infamous super soldier serum. It had previously transformed Peter Parker into the first Spider-Man. Wait a minute, who came up with the idea to store the super serum in a freaking spider? Eh, scientists can be weird sometimes. Maybe next time, put it in something that can't walk away. It's got eight legs, that's like four times more walking power. Uh, sure. Either way, with his new powers, Miles donned red and black to become the ultimate Spider-Man. As the newest spider led on the block, he does whatever a spider can. He's super strong, super fast, and has the overpowered super radar, the spider sense. After meeting Peter's Aunt May, Miles took up the classic web shooters, complete with multiple types of long to short range webbing. Yet another 
another tool that would be perfect for snagging a beer from the fridge without leaving the couch. Boomstick, he was a teenager. Different universe, different drinking laws, right? And also, like Peter, he can stick to walls. You know, spider style. Yes, like some spiders, Miles can control his body's interatomic attraction, essentially sticking to walls like a magnet. However, unlike Peter, this subatomic electron manipulation gave Miles a few extra moves of his own. Yeah, the kid's got electric powers! He can zap people with a quick touch, fire off massive explosions, and even turn invisible! Wait, what's that got to do with shocking people? This venom sting can even take out the Ultimate Universe's Electro, a being literally made of electricity. But Miles didn't just shock him, he disrupted Electro's own charge. Similar to a miswiring sending too much electricity in one direction and shorting out your computer when SOMEBODY forgot to plug it into the surge protector. Wiz, well, you know I don't believe in protection for anything. It's going in raw. Anyway, as what? the new Spider-Man, Miles obviously had a lot to live up to. After his Uncle Aaron died in front of him... HA! Told you somebody would pull him in! Miles pushed past the heart of He persisted, living up to Peter's ideals, and eventually stepped out of his shadow to be Spider-Man in a way only he could. Oh yeah, what's up, danger? He can blast apart a building-sized monster and survived being slammed around by the giant Cassie Lane. That's Ant-Man's daughter. He's smart enough to hack military drones and quick enough to destroy an alien device in a microsecond. Essentially, he needed to open and close a portal in an impossibly short time frame to prevent an alien force from invading. It's a long story. Point is, he's super fast. With his spider sense, he can react to things before they even happen. He's super tough, too. He even survived being caught in this giant super hey, glider hey, exploding. What? Measuring the size of this hole using real-world maps of New York and solving for fragmentation, we know this explosion must have been equivalent to about 222 tons of TNT. Sure, that's not technically canon to the comics, but guys, main series Spider-Man has done way crazier things. I mean, he has the same powers, and Miles has even beat the crap out of him! Classic Pete can bench press 130 tons, use his spider sense to dodge beams of light, and ripped apart Doc Ock's robo-arms, which once survived a two-kiloton nuclear explosion! So I'd say the Super Collider Pete checks out. Unfortunately, Miles' electric powers can tire him out, and his spider sense does not protect him automatically, serving more as an alarm or proximity sensor. But the youngins proved himself to be the best successor a Spider-Man could ever want, and more. He even got pulled into the main Marvel timeline when they blew up the Ultimate Universe. Miles Morales is truly one of the greats. Don't watch the map. Watch the hands. Despite growing up in the most crime-filled neighborhood of Dakota City, Virgil Hawkins was a pretty chill guy. He spent his time playing D&D, reading comics, you know, typical nerd stuff. But he had one major problem, <laughs> the classic sitcom bully. No teenage story is complete without it. During school, he was frequently harassed by local gang leader Francis Stone. Virgil's only refuge was one of his few friends, Larry Wade. Larry convinced yeah, Virgil there was only one way to get rid of Francis for good. Racism is Join bad. his own gang and pack some heat. Things got, well, pretty intense, and Virgil wasn't having any of it. It was time to bail like DC Comics on their cinematic universe. But the damage was already done. The police arrived and let loose a massive canister of what seemed to be tear gas, but wasn't. Yeah, this great-looking mist was actually some experimental shit. It was supposed to tag each gang member so the cops could track them down later, but it was actually laced with radioactive quantum juice, which killed almost everybody. I hate it when that happened. Luckily, Virgil was one of the few who survived, but the quantum juice still had an effect. You could say he was shocked to find out what it did. <sighs> yes, he began to develop electromagnetic powers. Before this, Virgil always felt out of his league. But now, he was in a league of his own and became the superhero, Static. <laughs> Hell yeah! With these new powers, the guy was unstoppable. He could blow shit up with electric bolts quick as lightning, make explosion balls called Nova Bombs, and taser people with punches to the face. Right, but he's not just good at shocking people. Static can alter the electron attraction of any object or surface. He can erect extremely durable electromagnetic force fields that block most attacks. He can even move metal around like a hip young Magneto. And slip metal under his feet to take to the sky. 
His favorite ride is the Static Saucer, a giant frisbee that doubles as a shield and buzzsaw. Think about it, don't you wish your car could literally cut through traffic? Obviously turning superhuman overnight caught Virgil a bit off guard, but after a few speed bumps, he became a well-regarded superhero throughout the city of Dakota, even teaming up with fellow heroes like Icon and Rocket. Icon and Rocket? Come on, where's Batman and Wonder Woman? Oh, I should mention that while Static is part of the DC Universe, he did not start there. See, Static was originally created by Milestone Comics, which eventually merged with DC. Their characters, including Static, existed in an alternate timeline known as the Dakotaverse. Then a guy named Dharma gained cosmic power and accidentally blew everything up, sending Static into the main DC timeline. It's really not too complicated. Uh-huh. I have actually been working on a device to peer into alternate timelines, but unfortunately it still needs... Well <laughs> now, old chap, what were we discussing but a moment ago? Oh, I'd like to know. Let's figure out who got to win the oh. fatality card for what? Oh, uh, yes, oh, I read his hops. Let's begin, my fellow Ultra Capitarian. I regret everything. <laughs> oh, do it again! No! I'm sure that's fine. Well, no matter the universe, Static was always one-upping himself. He learned how to see ultraviolet light and how to make people glow. Wait, 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 what's that got to do with shocking people? That would be his ability to detect bioelectric auras. Static can also create power-draining plasma coils, disrupt the electrical impulses of others, and empower or heal himself by draining energy from outside sources. He can literally reattach his severed arm with shock power! I'm not even joking! Look at this! Since when did electricity do that? Clearly, Static has a lot of power at his beck and call. He can survive building-sized kabooms, lift hundreds of tons, and once turned this huge chunk of ice into slush in just a couple seconds. Based on the size of the ice and the required change in temperature for such a feat, Static must have output energy equal to 180 tons of TNT. He's quick enough to intercept lasers confirmed to be beams of actual light, which is pretty darn fast. And in the cartoon, he actually shoved some quantum juice in some lockers and launched them out of orbit. These are typical school lockers, which can weigh up to 30 pounds each. And fit approximately one nerd. To throw three of these into space, they need to be moving nearly 3,000 times faster than sound, requiring a throwing force equal to 4 kilotons of TNT. Damn! Okay, sure, that's not canon to the comics, but his electromagnetism could play tug-of-war with Superboy's telekinesis, which can lift 4 million tons! I'm not sure Static can go that far, but if he's anywhere close, it's still higher than throwing some lockers around. Though, despite Static's incredible power, insulators are his kryptonite, and he can run out of juice if he pushes himself too much. But the guy's one of the coolest superheroes who rarely get his time to shine. Heck, he was good enough to join the Justice League. I think even Virgil himself Damn. was shocked to see how cool he really was. <laughs> Alright, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, all this talking has made me hungry. A few moments later. But right now, it's time for a death battle! There we go, guys. There we go. Stop 
like DJ. Shoot! Oh my God! 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 Oh my Even when we scaled Miles to classic Peter Parker's biggest feet, Static definitely had the oomph to take Miles out, but Miles had no easy way to get around his force field. The variety of techniques at Static's disposal also rest many of Spider-Man's abilities moot. Like how Spidey's invisibility didn't matter when Static could light him up like a Christmas tree, and his speed was so similar to what the Spider-Sense could give Miles that the Super Radar wasn't that big of a help. Remember, just because he knew an attack was coming didn't always mean he could dodge it in time. And, well, shockingly, Static only needed to hit him once. See, his electromagnetic manipulation gave him control over Miles' wall crawling and other abilities. As soon as he got a hold of Miles' bioelectric aura, it was basically all over. But hey, Miles and all the other Spider-Men fight Electro all the time, and they have no problem dealing with him. Why was Static any different? Simply put, every iteration of Electro pales in comparison. He has no feats of power that come even close to Static, and frankly, he's an idiot. Right. This was a fascinating <laughs> matchup, but... Oh, no, not again! Yay! Um, Mr. Morales put up a very good show, and yet Mr. Hawkins had him outdone in breathtaking power, stalwart defense, and veritable versatility! Oh, he was just miles ahead of him, don't you know? The victor is Static! <laughs> hey, thanks for taking out the premiere of Season 7 of Death Battle. If you want the battle music for yourself, you can get it by clicking the link down below. And, hey, the card game is back in stock, so check that out on store.wishdeep.com. Looks like in February we're gonna, gonna get Sindel versus Black and Mary. But something tell, tells me Sindel might have an advantage because of her sorcery po powers given to her by Shao Kahn. But anyway, uh, something told I knew that Static could win because Virgil he had so much electri electricity energy that he had full control of how his electrical powers work besides electro so and plus even though my mouse had had some had a little a little bit of advantage when it com comes to a few things but when it comes to Vir virgil and his electrical powers he can overcome anything if he learns how to control it but anyway, that, that's it for this death battle reaction till February. So post your comments down below. Make sure to also subscribe to Death Battle. Make sure to also like, comment, and subscribe to this video. Follow your boy on Twitter and Instagram at D0687. This is your boy Ronnie D. And this is Diesel Reactions. <laughs>